Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, we got the grand finale of my reaction to a docu-series coming from a Georgia prison, notoriously known for its violence and contraband cell phones and shanks. At least from what we've been seeing in this series, but we left off with the CERT team, which is like a special forces group of correctional officers that go in for shakedowns and stuff like that. We watched them question the victim, someone that got stabbed in the altercation while he was being forced to leave the pod by the other inmates. And today we're going to be concluding that situation to find out if the individual that did stab him ever gets caught. So far, the victim has been completely solid, hasn't said nothing to the COs. And a few weeks has already went past, but they're all still on lockdown. Not to mention the victim, he's on lockdown as well, under investigation. They're trying to get him to tell who stabbed him so that everybody comes off of lockdown and they can get the perpetrator off the compound. We're about to find out today if it works, if they catch him or not. Also, we're going to be following someone else who's charged with aggravated sodomy. And what many of the correctional officers have said, he is possibly one of the most dangerous inmates in Georgia. He's attacked staff, inmates, and, you know, aggravated sodomy. Yeah, nobody's cheap to safe around him, if you were to ask me, but he's serving life plus 40, and he just left the segregation unit. He said that he was in the box or the hole, 23 on 1, for 17 years. And even though Smith State Prison holds a variety of level inmates, it's mostly high-level violent offenders in there at this time, so... He's leaving the segregation unit in this highly maximum security prison. He's going to general population in Smith State for the first time in a long time. And he's going to be talking about some of the issues he's been having uh, trying to get situated around all these people. You know, guys doing life plus 40 with bad paperwork and violent. Those are definitely the type of people that will snatch someone's life real quick in prison. They have absolutely nothing to lose, you know, but... Let's get into it, follow these two situations, see how they end up, and keep in mind I'll leave all the links to the previous parts, even though you can watch each one of them in their own and not be lost, still learn plenty. I'll have them linked though in the comment section below if you want to run them back. But if you enjoy, don't forget to tap that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave, and check out my playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. He's our best source of information. Sometimes they're willing to talk, sometimes they aren't. They have a code to live by inside the institutions. Um, just like we have a code, we can't reveal information to the inmates in, in what we do a lot of times. Uh, they, they're not supposed to reveal any details about what they do to us. You change your mind, you write me a little letter, put it in the mailbox. Like I said in the intro, this is the victim of the stabbing. He still hasn't said nothing about the situation, so they're taking him back to the seg unit until someone says something. Right now, we're going to have to hold him in segregation until we find out who the inmate was that assaulted him. Or until we feel like the, the threat is over. Or if, if it's an ongoing threat, then, then we'll have to see about sending him to another institution. See? So we're going to keep digging, see if we can pull up some video off of the dormitory uh, videotape and go from there. Now, while they're continuing their investigation on the stab, and let's jump into another situation with an inmate by the name of Mr. Hawkins. Many guards say he's one of the worst inmates in Georgia just because of all the violent attacks he's done on correctional officers. And where did it land him? 17 years in the SEG unit, maximum security lockdown. And Smith State Prison, even though it's a high level prison, it's much lower of a security level degree than if you're on maximum security 23 and one lockdown. So Mr. Hawkins here is feeling a lot more freedom being out of that tomb 23 and one. And I'm sure the COs, the staff are watching him mr hawkins like a hawk most guys man they can't handle mainline general population especially after being a seg for so long all the mentalities and disputes man they end up killing people man or just snapping off and ending up going right back to the prison they were just released from i used to be in that frame of mind as for making the officer do what i wanted to do you know what i'm saying now I got to do what the officers say do if I want to stay in general population. So, you know, that's what it is now. I had to basically bring down from where I used to be to where I am now, I had to make a 360 degree turn. And a lot of people don't like to be controlled, you know? And I was one of those people. 
Is there a better way to control people? Yes. It's called finesse. And I'm gonna tell you somebody that specializes in it. Mr. Hilton Hall. Man, oh man, he couldn't be more right though. Prison is filled with finesse. Finagling your way around objectives and tricking people to drop them draws or maybe kick a couple white face honey bonds. Man, it's all straight finesse. Mind control, man. It's crazy in prison. I'm trying to tell you. Everybody be laughing and smiling in your face but trying to get over on you at the same time. Now, uh, in the previous episode, they did a flashback of Mr. Hawkins three years prior to this docuseries. They were in that max level lockdown facility and they interviewed him there as well. So this guy's pretty popular in Georgia, but we're going to be doing that again right now, traveling three years back to see where Mr. Hawkins was back then. He says, if it wasn't for Mr. Hell Nah, which happens to be this individual, the warden of the facility, he don't know where he'd be today. He said this guy had all the influence in the world on him because he gave him a chance and actually spoke to him like a person instead of just an inmate. Good morning, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Y'all got those lockers right? Yes, sir. Got the beds tight? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Straighten that up a little bit right there. Get this string off here. Pours your shoes. Don't hang no strings up now. That's a DR bed's not tight don't tighten up bed's not tight fool tighten it up oh is that where the term tighten it up came from i don't know but this is the warden he's going around doing his checks and of course he's gonna be on point it's the warden man all rules are in effect it better go strictly by the handbook and in georgia they have a military style way of discipline people or just to structure everything out a lot of boot camp rituals you know keep the bed tight keep things clean march this way sir yes sir from what i heard it's like that in the majority of georgia prisons but by the amount of shanks and violence in this prison, obviously it ain't working. It ain't helping these guys to fix themselves. It's probably just making them more mad. I don't know. I'm just trying to look at things from every angle. Could be helping. Feet together, your hands down by your side and head nice to the front. If you don't, you get locked up. <laughs> While sitting behind bars. <laughs> the man know his business. It, 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 funny as it sounds, he know his business. Yeah. Who tell you inspection was over? So you think, don't do that. Let me do that. He definitely woke me up. Man, it take a lot to wake fool up. <laughs> and I was fool. <clears throat> Mr. Hall came and talked to me and sat me down and, let, and, and basically told me, look, I saw you digging yourself deeper and deeper in the hole every day. I said, all right. <laughs> We're going to climb a little bit. And that's what we did. <laughs> All right, Will. Let's we'll see what we can come up with. All right. Now, this max level prison actually has like a step down feature. If you do good in one level, you'll go down to a lower level, okay? If you do good in that one, you'll get down to a lower one. If you do good in that one, then you'll land yourself in a nice little easy door. But you screw up, you're gonna go right back to the tip top and start all that shit over again. I never personally seen it. Usually you just do your time and go right back to general population. It just depends on the facility in the state. Every step that you get, you know what I'm saying? It, you can taste more freedom. You can't make a person change, just being straight up with you. you. The person has to want to change. There has to be some kind of incentive there for that person to want to change them from the situation where I came from. And I realized that. And usually the incentives is using the phone when you want to, going to the yard outside, enjoying the sunlight, going to take a shower when you want. All these things are amenities in prison, even though you're so used to them, just like people out here in the streets are used to walking on carpet, going to their fridge or doing whatever. They don't realize how important it was until it's all taken from them. They're shoved in a little box like the segregation unit. Then their mind opens up to all the good things they had. They want them back. So they start doing good again. Hence the carrot and stick technique that Georgia loves to uphold. So why not change? If it wasn't for that man, you know what I'm saying? I'd still be in that high mass in that cell. That's just straight up. Because didn't nobody else want to take a chance with me. Nobody. 
Everybody felt like, okay, you let him out there, he mess around and kill the officer. If he don't kill the officer, he gonna kill another inmate. So far, they've been proven wrong. Now we're going to be jumping back to present time. Keep in mind, this was three years ago. He decided to stop fighting the system. Probably the 17 years of said got to him. He's like, this is enough for me. Not to mention, he's probably like, man, 17 years went by. A lot of these guys ain't even going to care to think what I'm in here for aggravated sodomizations and stuff like that a lot of these guys man they will be ducking and weaving in these seg units but when they think that everything's blown over and they just became a figment of people's imagination then they'll come out act like they're a normal inmate but really they're just as dirty as when they began but he has been doing good on the step down process and we're going back to present time they dropped him to smith state prison which is still a high level prison but at the same time like i already said the security level goes down a lot more and he has a lot more freedom but before we see how he's doing in general population we're gonna jump into another situation Seems like an inmate's giving the COs a hard time, not locking down, trying to carry him a bit. And the lieutenant ain't got time for that, man. He's about to straighten it, come in full force. Hey, y'all, listen up. We're going down to G1. Lieutenant McFarlane had a problem locking down G1. He had the pepper ball gun brought down there. He deployed a couple of rounds onto the wall. Boom, boom. This inmate didn't move. Well, as I guess they assumed he wouldn't shoot him. And so it took them a while to lock them down. They wanted to challenge him. Don't, don't play with these guys. We ain't going down to We going down to do this job. Did y'all hear that? Uh -huh. Everybody hear that? Uh -huh. We ain't playing. And that's how it goes. You know, you put pressure on the COs. Sooner or later, the CO's going to do it to you. But keep in mind, this situation's only with one inmate that they shot the pepper balls at. But that one inmate could cause the whole place to have a situation like this. That's why I said, actually, in part one, it doesn't matter what you did. If you're running the risk of getting the pod locked down, shake down, you're going to get some enemies from the inmates around you, man, because they don't want to go through that process. They don't want a bump in their path. Your cells are closed, your doors. Go to your cell. Go to your cells and close the doors. Step inside your cell. Step inside your cell. Pull. He don't want to step in the pull him on out here. Got time for this. This is our house. This is our house. They live in here. And they will follow the rules. And that's what it's about. Now they found out who was starting all the stuff and they got him removed from the pod. But like I said, it doesn't matter. They're shaking the whole thing down and it doesn't take too long before they find what they need. I guarantee those guys that cause this scene are definitely going to be having some consequences with the inmates behind this. That's a lot of steel they found, man. Just imagine if you were not a part of anything and you just wanted to get into it with the CO that day and a bunch of gangs got their packs tricked up because of it. Man, you'd have a green light on your head so fast it's unreal. That's why people just stay out the damn way. A lot of people think that this is still jail. You know, you can mess with the COs and stuff, no issue, no problem. You know, you might be looked at even better than you were before. But this is prison, man. There's a structure to it. We you find that at? Back in small, small yard. Where at on the small yard? Right there where the exercise, uh, where the exercise bar and up under that cement. Okay. You got your flashlight. You don't check me. Stand back for me. Stand back for me. What you got, Cox? It's in here. You got a weapon in there? Mm -hmm. They don't push the back, but it's in here. I can feel it. Look like a fan rod. 
fan rock. Okay, yeah, that's an easy thing to make these weapons out of. Uh, they have this big piece of metal that goes into the fans because a lot of places ain't got AC, so the inmates can buy these fans. Funny story about them is I took apart the fan and made a giant tattoo machine. Even though it wasn't gonna work or nothing, it was still look cool, man. And people were laughing their ass. I'm like, man, you want a tattoo? I had a big ass fan motor. <laughs> <laughs> but they can make a shank out of that fan rod easily. And there ain't nothing they can do to stop that unless they stop selling fans altogether. But whoever's in that cell is going to be in for a dark, long road. They found a cell phone, drugs, and a shank. The trifecta, man. You know, this guy, man, he, he's in a bad spot. And you would think that they would have gotten rid of that stuff well before they came in. Because, I mean, dude had to pepper ball the other guy. You know, a lot of guys, they'll risk it. They're like, man, my hind spot's perfect. I'm not getting rid of it. I'll hide it in the cell. They ain't never going to find it. That's what they're wishing upon a star on. Probably got through a few shakedowns already. But sometimes, man, you get the wrong COs in there. They turn that shit inside out. During shakedowns, you'll see a bunch of COs. Some of them are going a lot faster than others. And you're hoping to brand that fast guy goes to your bump. He's just going to flip a couple mats and be on his way. But the other guy, he started at the same time as him. And he's still on bunk number one. Like, yeah, don't let that guy search my stuff. 105. 105. There you go. Yeah. And these, these are finally the same thing. This stuff make them break. They'll go in and rob, steal, fight if they have a tool in their hand. Yeah. I don't think y'all understand the amount of shanks in this prison is unreal. And it's not, but it's not a shocker. I mean, like I said, uh, they did a shakedown, I believe, of what was it, Fulton County Jail just recently. And they came out with wheelbarrows of shanks. Never would I have imagined that many. Now, this, believe it or not, is the individual that stabbed a guy in the beginning of the episode. It took some time, but they figured out who it was. Now, you know they're not going to go into detail on how they found out, because then it would be a security threat to the person. But if I were to guess, or shall I say bet it all, because I'm a gambling man, it was definitely another inmate. Either the person who got stabbed, which I'm not quite sure, because he held his water for weeks. But y'all heard what the CO said, nobody was getting off lockdown until they figured out who did it. And sooner or later, someone breaks. They ain't got time to be sitting in that box all day, every day. It just don't work like that. Someone's eventually going to tell it. But I'm not saying that it was the guy who got stabbed. I'm not saying it was anybody. I'm just saying someone said something. For them to go weeks without knowing what happened, they obviously didn't have anything on the video cameras. And also, if I were to bet, I would bet it all that this guy's going to be transferred to a whole new facility. But we're jumping back to Mr. Hawkins. Let's see how he's doing in general population. He does seem to be sticking out like a sore thumb. I wonder if he's going to stick around for a while. Anybody locked up in Georgia ever did time with this guy? Let me know. What I used to do was easy. What I'm doing now is hard. Not allowing somebody else to provoke me, to hurt them or kill them, that's the hardest. Whether it be an officer or a prisoner. Things happen. It's Mr. Grizzly. I done seen situations where sometimes, yeah, I be wanting to pick up a knife and stick out of somebody too. Yeah, it's a test. It's a test. It's definitely a test. Well, there you have it. That's the conclusion to this little mini docu-series reaction coming from Smith State Prison in Georgia. Still an active prison, and it still has highly active inmates. But we learned quite a bit of things here today. Chances are, sooner or later, especially when they keep people on lockdown for long periods of time, someone's gonna tell it. <laughs> That's a fact, man. And if they don't tell it, then they'll ship both of the people or anybody that they think had anything to do with anything to a whole nother compound. Second of all, to any of the class clowns out there, especially when it gets down to the penitentiary side of things, man, you gotta be careful what you do. It could cause a shakedown, and those shakedowns could get people tricked up that could lead you to getting tricked up, even more than what you already went through with the COs. So mind your P's and Q's in the penitentiary. Be a fun and funny character if that's what you are, but do it in the most low-key, right way you possibly can. 
And third of all, it seems like no matter what you do, unless it's something completely gruesome, I've seen it in stories in the past. Inmates kill other inmates. Yeah, it happens all the time. But it's not over. You might go to the SEG unit for two, three, five years. Or in this guy's situation, he said 17. It doesn't matter. They're going to give these guys a second chance. And these guys are probably the most dangerous of all inmates. When people say they ain't got nothing to lose, they literally don't. And they became accustomed to the whole segregation experience. And they'll make sure if they want to get back there, they'll do something to make their name a little more legendary behind those walls. Never trust nobody in prison, man. It doesn't matter if they got a smile on their face and looks as friendly as a kitten. And we learned a lot of other things, you know? There's so many... Damn, I hate doing a video and I got like lint or something on me, especially if you do the whole thing with it on you. Come on! But we did learn a lot and we got some laughs. So if you enjoyed, don't forget to tap that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave and never lose sight of the agenda on this channel, man. It's not to get ready for prison. It is to the people if they're going down that road. But the agenda here is not to begin or get close to going to prison at all. Stay the hell out and enjoy your life, man. Freedom is everything.